Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, this is video number one of two, the double uploads begin because there's so much going on and look, we've just hit 2pm UK time and I've got tons to show you and then I'm sure later on tonight when I give you the second video it will be the same so make sure you're tuned make sure you're subscribed make sure you've got that bell on because notifications are going to be popping off like they've never popped before let's get right into it actually before we do as I've said don't forget for uh, the video later on also um, imminent content coming to the second channel link in the description Eunice talks for all other non-football non-sport activities all there so make sure you're there for that as well let's get cracking and it's the news that we've been expecting not that we've been waiting for we didn't want to see this but we understand and it's N'Golo Kante it's official he is off to El Itihad and Fabrizio Romano has given us the three words that as I've said we didn't want to hear but we expected and it's happened here we go here's the latest from Fabrizio Romano Angolo Kante to Al Itihad. Here we go. Medical tests completed in London. Two year deal with an option for further season. 100 million euros per season salary. Figure includes image rights, commercial deals, and creative portfolio. Um, this is, yeah, this is uh, what it's come down to. And um, I'm. I'm not going to give a video dedicated to Kante just yet. That will come when I think we see him unveiled by Al Itihad, just like we saw Benzema unveiled by Al Itihad. When that happens, I think we need to go through everything that Angolo Kante's done for Chelsea. But what I will say is if there's anyone on the planet that deserves this sort of move, it's N'Golo Kante. And um, I'm genuinely just happy for him. I don't have any, oh man, I wish he'd stayed. I get it. Um, this is something at this stage of his career that you just cannot say no to. You would be a clown to be able to say no to this. Or, or, or you would have complete other fundamental reasons why you wouldn't. You know, say if you are just so attached to a club and you have told yourself from when you joined, I'm never leaving this institution, no matter what comes my way, then cool. You know, but it would be even hard to say that let's say a Francesco Totti of Roma or a Steven Gerrard of Liverpool, would nowadays, if Saudi clubs existed back in their times, would they leave? If they were offered this at the end of their career, at the twilight of their career, would they leave? It's hard to say no. Would you say no to 100 million euros a year? You just wouldn't. <laughs> you just wouldn't. 100 million euros. If we're going to try and... um. Let's pencil this down. 100 million euros divided by 52 is 1.9 million a week. 1.9 million a week. And that's N'Golo Kante. Benzema is making double. Benzema is on 3.8 million a week. Messi, if he comes to Saudi Arabia, he's been offered 400 million a year. <laughs> What's that? What's that? 7.6 million a week. It's just, what's going on? What's going on? Hang on, hang on, hang on. We gotta stop. We gotta stop for a sec. This is getting out of hand. <laughs> this is getting really out of hand. I have to say, I think these moves from Saudi are going to I don't want to say destroy football. Football's already destroyed. Um, but it's this is going to take it to another level. You know, we thought that this was high and we are operating here and we were complaining. Now it's going to be here. <laughs> it's just, it's going to skyrocket. So N'Golo Kante, look, he's achieved everything that he could possibly achieve at club and at country level, club and international. He's won the World Cup. He's won the Euros. He's won everything at Chelsea except for the Carabao Cup. And I think he can live with that. <laughs> I think he can. And that was only courtesy because of a penalty shootout against Liverpool in the final that we'd lost. You know, if not, he would have won everything. And Golo Kante has been absolutely tremendous, tremendous and, and integral to Chelsea. And I wish him the best, honestly. I don't know what he's going to do with that money. He's not a money guy. Um, but... 
you can't say no to that and his family are sorted, his close people are sorted, his grandkids are sorted, his great great grandkids are sorted, his great 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 grandkids are sorted, everyone's sorted, you know, so I can understand why he's taking this up, he goes to live in Saudi Arabia that I think would be perfect for for his, um, for, for what he would want and his way of living, so I wish him the best. And Golo Kante has gone to Al Etihad and we wait for the official unveiling of that um, to come from the club themselves, but the here we go has gone ahead moving on here's another piece of news involving a Chelsea player except it's not quite straightforward for this geezer check this out the Athletic tell us Newcastle United have already informed Chelsea that they are not interested in signing Christian Pulisic this summer this follows on Newcastle have already informed Chelsea that they are not interested in signing Christian Pulisic in this window AC Milan are possible suitors while there is a belief within the market that 20 million pounds would be a reasonable price for Pulisic the club is wary of setting any kind of precedent for compromising on transfer fees for players in the final year of their deals and um yeah this is this is this is what it's coming down to for players like Pulisic players like like Pulisic, Ziyech, um, Aubameyang's been offered an exit route to Saudi, so that's a good thing. Um, but there are players that, it's all very unsure, hudson Adoy. They will be leaving, but where? And for how much? You know, when you look at a Pulisic, you'd think the profile of player like Pulisic should be getting about 40 million. Should. But because he's just not been playing period because of his injuries or when he has played it's been underwhelming or market value is going to drop and that's understandable and 20 million we'd be lucky to get 20 million honestly right now we'd be lucky to get 20 million so i just hope that there's going to come a come forward a club that are willing to take on christian pulisic and players of that bracket at chelsea who are just lingering and we hope that there's going to be some sort of a an exit plan um so there we are. Um, that's uh, that's the latest on Christian Pulisic, but it's quite telling that you have a club like Newcastle who were at first interested in Christian Pulisic, now going, nah, mate, we're all right. Uh, <laughs> it tells you everything you need to know. And I say, I say, I say this, be careful of Newcastle. Keep your eyes on Newcastle. Keep your eyes on Newcastle. Why? Because they've made Champions League football now. Now their, their plan is now gone from stage one to stage two, which now they can step up on the signings. They can step up on trying to attract the best. Not the very best, but they're, they're leveling up. They've built a foundation. They've had a good coach in Eddie Howe that's taken them to Champions League football with players that you'd look at and go, no, they're decent. They're not blockbuster, but they're decent. They've got a fundamental team block now. Now it's about adding the quality on top, you know, and then more later on. They keep doing that. They're going to challenge for the title. They're going to challenge for the title. You think now they're going to drop out of the top four? No, nah, mate. <laughs> they have cemented their place in the top four. Next season, I think they're going to finish in the top four. And then from there, you best believe, they, with the money that they have at their disposal, they will be competing for the Premier League title alongside Manchester City. And that will come in the near future. So a team like Newcastle, I'm saying, be careful, be careful, be careful. Keep your eyes on Newcastle. I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon um, in terms of leaving the top four or leaving the title challenge. They are now in the mix. And I think we've got to, we've got to include them in the big boys club. You know, top, the big four... The, the top four, the big six, all those, you know, analogies, Newcastle are in it. So we, what are we going to do? Are we going to kick someone out or are we going to are we going to increase the, the group to the top five or the big seven? What's going on? Because um, that's why I think it's, it's happening now. Talking about a club in that bracket, Liverpool have done tremendous business. Check this out. Liverpool have just signed Alex McAllister for £35 million. Pounds. Reds have now triggered the clause to sign the midfielder after medical tests completed with Brighton's permission. Documents are being signed. Here we go confirmed. I find this absolutely incredible. You know, um, and people are going to underwhelm it or undermine it and go, no, nah, Liverpool just triggered a release clause. I don't see anyone else triggering the release clause. Testament to Liverpool. Identifying exactly what they need. They've gone to the club. How much? Release clause. Triggered. Thank you very much. Bob's your uncle. Get the deal done. Done. Huge testament to Liverpool and the way that they conduct their business. It's flawless. The way that they always go for a player and they got a strategy and then it, it pays off. They get their man. 
eloquently, flawlessly, without any interruptions from anyone else, no one trying to get into the mix, they just go in, they get the business done and they leave, and they get it done early. Players are on holidays, or at best they're going to their international teams, to their national teams, and you have this piece of business already done weeks before pre-season. Tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. And the fact that, as I've said, people are going to undermine it and go, oh no, but they, they just triggered a release clause. They got the job done. And they got it done early. Don't see your club doing that. Unless if your club has, then fair enough. My club isn't. <laughs> and this is why I'm bitter. Because I'm looking at Liverpool and I'm thinking, this is fantastic from them. What, why are we holding ourselves up? What's going on? You know, it's, it's absolutely, um, it's, it's a point to, to make. And um, it's, it's a point to, to elaborate on the fact that that is how you get business done efficiently, early, and getting exactly what you need at the same time. It's beautiful. So well done to Liverpool on pulling off an Alexis McAllister for 35 million brilliant business absolutely brilliant business and um, I think that's going to address a big concern in their midfield that they've they've had for a little while um they're getting what they need and that's a brilliant brilliant piece of uh, business from Liverpool so fair play now talking about dodgy business um <laughs> Spurs what on earth are you guys up to well here we go check this out Tottenham are interested in signing Harry Maguire <laughs> Following Angie Postecoglou's appointment, they have inquired about his situation at Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag is open to a sale. Also furthering on, uh, this is from Fabrizio Romano, Harry Maguire is due to discuss his future with Ten Hag next week and there is a mutual realisation that a parting of the ways would be best. Harry wants regular football, which he knows would strengthen his chances of keeping his England place. Look, <laughs> um, I understand why United would want to let go of Harry Maguire. Completely understand that. And I think there's more names that will be leaving Man United and fair play. Correct make correct move to make. Tottenham? You guys actually want Harry Maguire? Are you guys okay? Are you okay? You, Tottenham does not fail to uh, surprise anybody at this point, honestly. Or, or it doesn't fail to disappoint anybody at this point. It's just constant banter after banter after banter. And they've, uh, they've just pulled off what I think is a reasonable and good move to get Angie Postacoglu as their manager. I think that's actually going to work out pretty well. But to further it on with Harry Maguire, your defence is going to be Eric Dyer and Harry Maguire. I mean... Who knows, maybe Tottenham's, um, Tottenham's uh, logic could be, hey, look, you know what? He plays well for England, or he plays somewhat decent for England sometimes. Not all the time, sometimes. So let's pair him up with another English lad, and we might get that version of Harry Maguire. That is probably what they're thinking. <laughs> How, oh, Matt, 40 million, apparently, is the, uh, is the number being touted. Who in the blue hell would spend 40 million on Harry Maguire? Harry Maguire! Like, the, oh, no, it, it's mad. It's, it's outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous. Um, I don't know what to say. Tottenham, just keep Tottenham in. This is the history of the Tottenham. <laughs> this is it. This is it. Just constant banter. If you guys actually get Harry Maguire, I feel sorry for you. I just, at, at this point, I just feel sorry for you. Actually, no, do I? You put yourselves into this mess. I feel sorry for the Tottenham fans. The fans, yeah, you don't, you don't deserve this. <laughs> you don't deserve this. <laughs> Honestly, um, outrageous. Anyway. Talking about Manchester United, we have big news coming out of Man United this afternoon and it involves Sheikh Jassim's bid for Manchester United. Here's the latest. Fabrizio says Sheikh Jassim submitted a fifth bid to buy 100% of Manchester United. It's an improved bid with clear indication. Take it or leave it. There will be no more bids from the Qatari group after this Friday. Sheikh Jassim will no longer engage with the process. We've got Mike Keegan of the Daily Mail saying the same thing. Sheikh Jassim has submitted a fifth bid for Manchester United. Improved offer comes with Friday deadline. After then, offer stands but no further Further engagement in negotiations. Strong desire to provide transfer funds once this done. Um, the bid went in earlier this week. Ben Jacobs tells us Sheikh Jassim's 9-2 foundation have submitted a fifth bid to buy Man United. It's an improved take it or leave it final offer. If there is no feedback or progress by Friday, Sheikh Jassim will no longer engage. The latest offer went in earlier this week and is understood to be circa $6.5 billion with $1 billion of pledged investment on top. 9-2 foundation sources reiterate that their offer is for 100% of the club, is fully cash and is transactionally simple. 
any sale would clear Man United's debt and provide funding for player, infrastructure and other investment needs. 92 Foundation sources point out that their offer is at an enormous premium on the current share price. The opening of the transfer window is seen as critical to Sheikh Jassim. In his eyes, it will have an enormous bearing on the future of club and coming in midsummer will be damaging. That's why 92 Foundation want to exert pressure or, as previously reported, ultimately walk away. On one hand, the fifth bid by 92 Foundation can be seen as a power move, but as reported, if Sheikh Jassim feels he won't be successful, sources indicate he'll also want to exit on his own terms rather than being rejected. On Sir Jim Ratcliffe's side, there remains cautious optimism. There is positive and ongoing communication between Ineos and Rain Group. Ineos have felt nothing is imminent for one to two weeks, but we now wait and see if how 92 Foundation's offer changes things. This is mega, and it's clear to see what. Manchester United are actually trying to do here the Glazers want to stay and the only ones that facilitate that are the Ineos group or Sir Jim Ratcliffe if we're talking about Ineos let's just say Sir Jim Ratcliffe it's him because he is willing to keep a share with the Glazers and the Glazers would therefore remain at Manchester United and this is where Man United fans are fuming because they want Sheikh Jassim you best believe they want Qatar to walk in and take in this club and you can just tell in the way that Sheikh Jassim's 9-2 foundation have laid out the blueprint in terms of 100% um, acquirement of Manchester United funds ready for transfers, infrastructure, the entire club, no more debt, it's all wiped off that's perfect. You can't get a more better bid than that. You can't. You can't a more better bid. That's not right. Um, you can't get a better bid than that. You just can't. It doesn't get better than that. It's perfect. So Man United fans, rightfully so, are looking at this and going, yeah, we want Sheikh Jassim. Instead of getting Sir Jim Ratcliffe and then their shares, the Glazers haven't gone, it's the same people running the club, maybe there's a bit more investment, maybe Sir Jim Ratcliffe is just money orientated, he doesn't really care about United. I mean, all of these things are fluctuating around the place, whereas with Sheikh Jassim, he just comes in and he wipes all that out. But the overall package, it seems like Sir Jim Ratcliffe has outbid Sheikh Jassim. And on top of that, he gives power to the Glazers, which for the Glazers is perfect. More investment, more money goes to them. They stay at Man United. Win, 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 win. But for Jake, Sheikh, Sheikh Jassim, he's, ma he's now made it clear. He's not messing about. Friday's the deadline. Take it or leave it. You either take it or on Friday, you ain't seeing me again. Goodbye. And this is where I have to say my gut feeling is that the Glazers are going to go with Sir Jim Ratcliffe. And if that happens, all hell is going to break loose in the Man United fan base. That is all I'm going to say and I'm going to leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below. I will be here with the popcorn. <laughs> waiting to see it happen I will I will um, obviously from a, from a Chelsea blue tinted glasses point of view of course I will be there you with the popcorn but um, Man United fans yeah have been sold a dream it's only now we're going to see if that dream becomes reality by Friday will the Glazers accept Sheikh Jassim's final offer which is a substantial bid or will he side with Sir Jim Ratcliffe and we never see Sheikh Jassim again let me know down below what you think is going to happen, what you think is best, and I will see all of you later on for video number two. So thank you so much for watching. Your comments down below on everything discussed in this video. Kante, McAllister, Maguire, Sheikh Jassim, all of that in the comments. Much appreciated, and I'll see you later on. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. See you later, people. In a bit, take care, and peace.